Hello, everybody. Welcome back here to the Wine with Jimmy channel. I am your host, Jimmy Smith. Thank you for uh, stopping by. This is an educational channel all about wine to help you get more from it. And certainly those of you studying the topic to really understand it. Welcome here to a series on Rioja. Uh, this is a part of the Spanish section of course, and it's for the diploma level four. This is part two of a nine part series on this wonderful northern Spanish wine region. Uh, so uh, this is free content. Parts three through to nine are only available on my e-learning portal. You'll see the very important URL at the bottom there, winewithjimmy.com. So uh, if you do have any comments and questions, love to hear from you. Pop it in the comments section below this video and make sure you click like and subscribe as well. Okay, let's get rocking and rolling, talking about all things Rioja in terms of climate and grape growing. First of all, let's set the scene. Around 65,000 hectares of vines in this autonomous region towards the north of Spain. And this is actually an increase of over 50% from 1990. And that's a figure that is still growing gradually year by year. This is an important Spanish and world wine region. Production is around 3 million hectolitres and we love it, absolutely love it. So what about the layout of the land? And then we'll get into, of course, the specific parts of Rioja and the climate and weather behind them. First of all, the topography. So the layout here of the land. To the north of Rioja is the Sierra de Cantabria, which is that extensive northern mountain range which stretches from the Galician Massif towards the northwest of Spain all the way to the Pyrenees, which is that kind of north-northwestern border of Spain. It's large, expansive and it protects everything that is situated below it. So really anything that's situated below this Cantabrian mountain range is protected from the effect mostly of the Atlantic Ocean. So the Sierra to Cantabria. Then in the southern section of Rioja, so now going to the opposite side, where it borders mostly Castilla y Leon, we find the mountain range smaller, called the Sierra de la Demanda, and here you see it in this picture. The Sierra de la Demanda is a part of the Sistema Iberico, and this is a mountain range on the northeast edge of the Mazetta. It shelters the vineyards from uh, the weather uh, and warm weather that comes from the centre of the country. So really, you've got mountains on the north and south, the Cantabrian and then the Sierra de la Demanda, which uh, protects in the north from the cooler Atlantic effect and in the south from that kind of hotter, more continental effect. So it's a lovely situated area for, of course, viticulture. And what runs through the middle is, of course, the Ebro River. So the Ebro River flows from the Cantabrian mountain range near the Picos de Europa in the middle of the Cantabrian. And then it kind of heads sort of southeast uh, going through La Rioja uh, and then goes down towards places like um, uh, Aragon and then eventually around Catalonia, at the bottom of Catalonia, where it empties into the Mediterranean. Uh, it's Spain's longest river at 565 miles long. That's 910 kilometers. Uh, and it's the kind of really central life force of the region. So many of the important cities are situated along it, like Logroño, Haro, for example. Uh, and uh, it really creates a dividing line politically as well. So Navarra is off to the north of La Rioja, the, ba the, the, the Basque country as well, the Pais Vasco too. Uh, and we'll look into that in a bit more greater detail soon as well. Um, you might hear La Rioja also being called the Zone of Seven Valleys. Uh, so we know the Ebro is the major life force that runs through La Rioja. And here you'll see it. Now, I'll scribble this in a uh, pen here. Let me just get my drawing pen up. Here we go. Here comes the Ebro. 
Okay, so it meanders a lot more than what I'm doing, but uh, I'm drawing the general course of it. Uh, Logroño is just gone through there, and it comes down here, okay, as it heads its way through Aragon and then eventually Catalonia on the Mediterranean. So, yes, that's the kind of life force, the central river of the valley of the Ebro area. But you'll notice that there are a number of smaller rivers that run into it. They empty into the Ebro. Uh, so we have them like the Oja here. Etymology, very important. Rioja, you have the re river Oja. Uh, so the O-J-A here, which is an important bit of etymology for it. Where's the, the area takes its name from? But other places as well. Let's just uh, zoom in a little bit so you can see those a little bit. So we've got things like the Leze Hubera uh, as well. Uh, and um, uh, many others. So there are a number of rivers that run into uh, the Ebro in this place. Now, with all of these rivers that run into the Ebro, of course, they form their own sort of small valleys, and that creates a multitude of uh, different valleys, uh, aspects, uh, altitudes. You've got differing characteristics, because most of these rivers, as you can see, come from the Sierra de Demando, part of the Sistema Iberico and then head into the Ebro River. So they're heading northward in this instance. And you've got lovely amounts of little valleys there that are going to create great, uh, wonderful areas, which can, of course, create good differences between the Rioja. So let's have a look at a little look at the geography, and then we'll go into the key areas of Rioja. So most of Rioja's vineyards lie in the autonomous community of La Rioja. So that's an important thing to make immediately here, that the, the, the differentiation between the community, the autonomous province of La Rioja, and then Rioja as a product, which is wine, the vineyards from this area. So um, that is everything below the river here, the Ebro River. So that squiggly, meandering river, the Ebro, everything below it, this, most of this orange and most of this purple, is within La Rioja, okay? But some vineyards are lying north of that. Uh, so you'll see these red parts here are actually the Rioja Alavesa, and all the red parts here, so non-contiguous, separated, these are, of course, in Alava, which is part of the Pious Vasco, the Basque country. And then there's a smaller amount dotted north of the Ebro here, in Navarra. Uh, okay, so you do have some vineyards in Navarra, quite a few in Alavesa, and then the bulk of them actually in La Rioja. You'll notice I mentioned that the Ebro is the dividing line here, but there is a little bit of yellow that comes up here, which is the Alta, which is actually a part of the autonomous province of La Rioja. Uh, so the river isn't a complete dividing line. Uh, so we have uh, three areas here, three zones of La Rioja. We have the uh, sort of yellowy orange area here called the Rioja Alta. Then we have the red area, the non-contiguous part called Rioja Alavesa. And then we have the purple area called Rioja Oriental. Uh, it is possible to make very broad generalizations on the climates of these zones. But the topography and soils are generally very, very varied in this area. Uh, so it's quite difficult to actually put a lot of clout behind those generalizations. There's also quite a lot of significant uh, voice for changing these boundaries of these three zones to either reflect climatic or more over geological differentiations across the whole of La Rioja. And that's what we're going to get into here. So let's have a look at this big yellow expanse. So I've zoomed in on it just here. This is the Rioja Alta. Now this is the largest zone lying predominantly to the south of the river Ebro, but you'll notice of course there are some small parts just above it here. There's a little bit above Logroño, some here around San Vicente de la Sonsierra, and then north of Arrow as well. Uh, now, it's generally area here is continental, because Rioja is continental, but with some influences. And I've, draw, I've drawn there a significant blue arrow, because 
what comes down the valley from the Cantabrian mountain range is some Atlantic influence. Uh, and that creates, of course, slightly cooler conditions, potentially slightly wetter conditions. Now, that can mean that vintage variation is, in fact, quite marked. So you can find that there are differences in vintages uh, because parts of Rioja, certainly up here, may receive more or less influence from the Atlantic. And of course, that means if it's more bringing cooler and wetter weather. Now, the next picture I'm going to show you is, in fact, the geological look at this area. So it's the same area, but this time the colours are a little bit different. And that's because we're going to talk about the geology that's found in Rioja Alto. Uh, so first of all, uh, the Ebro area. So the vineyards around the Ebro area are those that are at lower altitudes. Of course, it's where the river is running through. And generally, that means that that's warmer because it's the valley bottom. You've got the river there as well, and it's a bit warmer. And you have mostly along the river, uh, certainly on the outer side, you see where these brown parts go down the valleys, because there are a number of rivers here, remember, and that's the brown areas are the alluvial soils. So our richer, more fertile soils. The northwest corner, uh, so areas like San Vicente, but also all the way up here to the far northwest area, this is cooler and wetter. And the soils are more calcareous clays, limestone based clays. And that's what's identified in yellow here on this map. Now, the southern section, as it goes down to the Sierra de la Demanda, is actually at some good altitudes. You'll find around 700 meters down here on a mixture of alluvial, but moreover, ferrous clays. Uh, so these are iron rich clays, uh, sort of reddish based soils. So good altitude as we go to the Sierra de Manda, up to 700 meters. And then really up here, as you go up to the Cantabrian mountain range, you can go up to about 800, 850 meters in that expanse. But then quickly coming down to much lower altitudes as it goes to the Ebro River. Uh, we're going to move across now to the Rioja Alavesa. So as I mentioned, um, we are focusing again. So we are we are zooming in here on this red non-contiguous area. So you'll see here north of Logroño around places like La Guardia, you have the larger area of Rioja Alavesa. And then up towards La Bastida, you have the separated area. But both of them are north of the river Ebro. OK, this is the smallest of the zones. Uh, and it, yeah, as mentioned, flows, uh, the river Ebro flows below it to the south. It's relatively cool and wet, and it's quite similar, therefore, fairly similar to Rioja Alta. The vineyards are located up to around 800 metres, and we are pretty much on calcareous clays, almost exclusively in this area. It is one of the reasons why a lot of people talk about the Basque area here of La Rioja producing some of the uh, brightest wines with highest acidities and longevity for aging because of the slow ripening and polymerization of the tannin towards the end of the growing season. Now, same map, but this time we transplanted the geology on top of it, like we did previously with Alta. Um, as I mentioned, the vineyards are fairly high up and they're on calcareous clays. So that's why this is all yellowy here, as we can see. Nice and easy one. You're just saying Alavesa is limestone clays. OK, not as complex as Alta earlier on. And then the last area is going down towards the southeast. We are heading down the Ebro Valley as it works its meandering course towards the Mediterranean. And of course, we're therefore going down in altitude as the river finds its course to the ocean. Um, this zone is only slightly smaller than Rioja Alta, which was the first area we discussed. And it lies to the east of the city of Logroño that you'll see just here, to the east to the southeast. Uh, it is north and south of the Ebro River, most of it to the south, but you'll see 
some of it is north, in the province of Navarra, as discussed earlier. Now, originally, this was called Rioja Baja, B-A-J-A, -A, uh, but the name was changed to Rioja Oriental. Why? Well, Baja means lower, and that's because this is the lower part of Rioja, and because it's where the river is, of course, going down. Now, lower could mean something negative. So they've changed it to Oriental, meaning Eastern, which is slightly sexier in their ideas. Uh, now, this is generally the lowest altitude and the warmest and driest in the whole of Rioja. But because it's a fairly large geographical area, there are pockets here that are at higher altitudes, certainly when we go down towards the Sierra de la Demanda, uh, where we are going towards the Sistema de Berico. Uh, so we find that vintage variation can be here as well, but less marked than up in the Alta and Alavesa. Uh, the Mediterranean, though, is what can shape this area. And if the Mediterranean has a big effect coming up the River Ebro, like this big red arrow, it will bring warmer and drier weather and potentially, of course, drought like conditions. Now, just like the previous two areas, let's have a look at the uh, geological map of Baja. There you go. And uh, we are looking at vineyards located at, at roughly around 500 meters, quite commonly, but can go up to 1000 meters. Uh, and the temperatures at those really high end altitudes can be as cool as the other areas. Um, the soils here are a mixture of alluvial soils, certainly towards the river Ebro, and then ferrous clays, our iron rich terra rossa type soils are found here as well, as you can see from the map. Uh, rainfall uh, across the zone. Now, it's quite difficult to actually say that rainfall is one type in somewhere like the Alavesa, one type in Alta and one type in the Oriental. Uh, it, you can see from this map that the, um, uh, the kind of blues that you get and the turquoises all determine different amounts of rainfall per year. Uh, and that's per square meter. It goes up as you can see, towards the lighter blue, which is actually more of a mountainous area, but a lot of it in this northern area. So you see the lightest blue is this bottom one. Uh, the turqu uh, turquoisey colour, greeny colour, is uh, quite uh, high in, uh, in rainfall as well. And that's what you tend to get in the outer area and parts of the Alavesa, whereas the driest conditions come down the river here uh, as we get towards areas like um, Alfaro, towards the real eastern part of Rioja. <clears throat> OK, so climate change of the area. Over the last few decades, climate change has made high altitude vineyards very attractive and more viable. Whereas previously, if you go back many decades, grapes in those areas may actually struggle to ripen. Uh, the area most at risk from climate change is thought to be the lowest altitude parts of the Rioja Oriental, which is already quite warm and suffers drought. So really towards the Ebro River part of Rioja Oriental. Um, now, the, all, all of this climate change and all the vintage variation means that we uh, can look at some different philosophies behind winemaking which I'll discuss a little bit more detail later on in the series. But for now, we actually will just give you a little pointer here. So, um, of course, Rioja is quite well known at the lower end in terms of uh, the cost for making quite attractive, consistent wines. So there is uh, importance in blending between sites to get that consistency. But some, of course, certainly in the more premium end, don't worry so much about that and like actually the differences that vintages can have on their wines. They think it's very much a part of the place. Great growing here. So uh, Rioja has considerable plantations of old bush vines. Uh, this is some old Garnacha vines in the region. And some of these vineyards can be in excess of 100 years old. But of course, 
considerable investment in this area. Now, I mentioned on the historical section, which was part video one, that Spain joined the EU in the 1970s. And when it did, EU funding became available for certain things like agriculture and viticulture. Uh, these funds meant there was a possibility for restructuring vineyards. And now a significant proportion of Rioja is actually trellised with the SP, making, of course, mechanisation more viable. You'll see the vineyard here. Uh, you've got certainly the tracks of tr uh, tractors in here uh, and access on is much more uh, possible in those vineyards when you've got a well-organized mono monoculture vineyard of trellising that you can see there. <clears throat> Just a little thing here as well on a certain type of vine training you could see. It's rarer. Uh, it's something you see down in Jerez in Andalusia in Sherry. But this is the Vari Epulga, which is either something you really call the stick and thumb. Now, it's a single trunk that you see here on the left hand side with two arms, uh, one on the left and one on the right. Uh, and the production will alternate between the left and right. So in this instance, of course, production is currently in play on the right hand arm. So one year, the left arm is cut back to a single spur. That's what you find here on the left hand side uh, with normally one or two buds. And that's what we call the thumb. And then we have the right arm, which has seven or eight buds and, of course, will shoot plenty of uh, shoots. And that is what we call the stick, the vara, the stick. And it's propped up by a stick on the right hand side. So the variapulga method of vine training. The last slide here is actually not something I will um, read through. It's a table which might be useful for you to pause and have a look here at the recap of everything I've just gone through in terms of the three zones of La Rioja, of Rioja, uh, and then uh, through location, climate, temperatures, rainfall, soil types, elevation, vineyards, and the major variety, which of course, a lot of this is actually coming up in good detail throughout the rest of this series. That brings me to the end of the video. I do hope you've enjoyed this video looking at climate and grape growing. If you have any questions, any comments, maybe you have a question about something in this presentation. Maybe you have a comment about uh, Rioja. You've been there when it's really hot, there's been a drought. Uh, you want to tell me about vineyards, grape growing, you've seen Varia Bulga, something along those lines, then pop it in the comments section below. It's always nice to hear from you. Make sure you click like and subscribe. Um, parts three through to nine, all the videos after this are only available to those of you that subscribe to my e-learning portal. That's over at winewithjimmy.com. It would be great to have you on board. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. See you again on the other side. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you for now. Bye bye.